a great joy and a privilege to be on the platform tonight. I trust the Lord to be a blessing to you. I trust the Lord that the word of the Lord will comfort and touch your life. What a word God has given our daddy. Exceeding glory. The word glory in the English language may not carry the intensity and the capacity of the word because the English language is only 600 years old and it borrowed from everywhere. But the word glory in the Hebrew carries more than just something that shines. Glory is about majesty. Glory is about excellence. Glory is about blessing. Glory is about favor. So when the Bible says Isaiah 61, arise and shine for your light is come. And the glory, and the, the Hebrew word for glory, there are three words. It can either be kayil or kabod or shekinah. And, the, and when it says, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you, it is the Hebrew word kayil, which means splendor is on you. Magnificence is on trem. Grandeur is on trem. Splendor is on trem. Beauty is on trem. Luxury is on trem. Splendor again is on trem. Dignity is on trem. Respect is on your life. Homage is on your life. Honor is on your life. If I'm talking to you, shout a big amen. Glory, therefore, means that the original intention of God for you was for you to be a carrier of his glory. That's why the Bible says, God created man in his own image. Imago Dei, like we say in theology, means the very essence of who God is. It isn't the ear. The ear of God is not like yours. So when the Bible says God hears, it is using anthropomorphic words to describe an awesome God. We were meant to carry glory. We were meant to enter a place and nature respects us. I am so convinced that when Adam and Eve were created, before their fall, they walked on water. How do I know? Four rivers were created, no bridge. How do you move from one river to the other river? How do you cross? Because they were carriers of his presence. Carriers of his glory. Carriers of his anointing. But it was lost in Adam. Then the last Adam came. The Lord Jesus Christ. He is not just a prophet. Please be very careful Nigeria. Particularly Christians in the south. Some people of other faith will try to tell us. We serve the same God. Not you and I. Since you said Jesus is only a prophet. And he is not just a prophet. He is God. He is the savior. He is the very essence of the father. I hope I'm preaching to the right people tonight. Exceeding glory. Therefore is the call of God on your life. And I declare on someone tonight. You will carry that glory. You will manifest that glory. You will show that glory. The glory will be seen in your life. It will be felt in your house. People who see you will see the glory. Glory brings favor. May favor be on your house. Glory brings security. May the security of God be in your house. Glory brings the presence of God. Ali Karib Rosia. One of the glories. Shekinah is actually having to do with presence. So whenever they built the tabernacle, the presence of the Lord rested on the place. And the people just knew, God is in the place. On the outside, the, ta the tabernacle was covered with animal skin. But on the inside, the glory was there. So though this earthen vessel is going to perish, but we are carriers of glory. Sometimes you go through things in a nation that hide your glory. But the time has come for exceeding glory in your life. I said the time has come for exceeding glory in your life. Glory brings consecration. 
May your life be a consecration to God. Glory brings miracles. When the, mirac- when the glory of God is present in a place, there are miracles you cannot orchestrate by yourself. I was preaching on Monday in Ghana in a crusade in the Volta region of Ghana in a village called Anloga. About 15 to 20,000 people finished preaching, started praying for the sick. There was a boy there. Volta region of Ghana feels and sounds like Yoruba land. You don't mess with some people. They touch you. You go no say they touch you. So this little boy, somebody touched his head, he became paralyzed. For two years, can't walk. In the middle of the service, the glory of the Lord came on the meeting. The boy stood up and began to walk. His mother didn't know what to do. I came all the way from London, England to prophesy to somebody here, the glory will manifest. I said, your glory will manifest. Your glory will manifest. You will be a carrier of glory. Some say, I'm a carrier. I'm a carrier of the glory of God. Shout amen with power. One of the greatest challenges of the church in the West, America, Europe, is marketable Christianity without glory. Preachers who can park a hall and you can't sense the anointing of God. Don't lose the glory. Don't miss the glory. Don't leave the glory. Be a carrier of the glory. Seek the glory. Let it rest on your life. So the Bible says, Isaiah 61, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Tonight, my greatest emphasis is going to be the five enemies of the glory. And we're pulling them down. I said, we're pulling them down. Those enemies are here in Nigeria. They are almost everywhere. But we need the glory to counter them. The first enemy of the glory is darkness. The Bible says gross darkness covers the earth. But I came tonight to let somebody know. When there is darkness, nobody sees your glory. Darkness means lack of opportunity. Darkness means no manifestation. Darkness means you are not shining. But I join my faith with that of our daddy and mom. And I declare in this house. That darkness will be over in your life. Shout amen with power. Darkness is an enemy of the glory you carry. Darkness means lack of opportunity. Darkness means obscurity. Darkness means you can't go forward. That's why the first thing God ever did was to switch on the light. He said, let there, because the only thing you can create in the dark is a monster. So tonight, someone within the reach of my voice, the darkness is trying to obscure you. You finish all the university, you can't get a job. You look beautiful, nobody's marrying you. You work, nobody sees you. They don't promote you. You have a business, it's not going forth. Tonight, I prophesy on your life. The darkness is over. The darkness is over. I said the darkness is over. And when we talk darkness, it's not just the absence of physical light. We're talking spiritual darkness. So the Bible... Give a man the arise and shine for your light. It's come and the glory of the Lord, the kail of the Lord is risen upon you. Tonight, somebody here, you've been through all the been throughs. This convention will be the convention of your testimony. It be the convention of your turnaround. Shout amen with power. The second enemy of the glory. You carry glory. 
But these enemies are trying to rescind, restrict, and stop you. The second enemy of your glory is lines that have been drawn. Invisible lines. Evil lines. Tonight, and I declare, along with all the people who will speak this conference, you will cross that line. You will cross that line. Every evil line that has been drawn for you, I declare as a servant of Jesus Christ, you will cross the line. You will cross the line. Touch yourself and say, I'm a line crosser. I'm a line crosser. I'm a line crosser. I declare again, you will cross the line. You will cross the line. First Kings chapter 2, verse 36 to 45. David is about to die. He tells Solomon, his son, many people did me evil, though. Solomon, but I know it handle them. I did go. I go hand them over to you. Make you deal wisely with them. One of them, his name is Shume. I mean, she may. Whatever may. He was an evil man. Oh, he saw me one day on the street and began to abuse me. Waka, shaggy, idiot. He was cursing David. Why? He assumed that David killed Saul and Jonathan. Assumption is the mother of mess up. When you assume about your people, you react with your assumption. And you can be wrong. So she may saw David and began to abuse David. David handed him to Solomon. Solomon invited Shime. I said, Mr. Shime, you abused my dad. You cursed him. He didn't do anything. Well, as the new king in town, as a new sheriff in town, I'm making an announcement to you. You shall not leave Jerusalem for the rest of your life. The day you step out, I'll kill you. And Shume agreed that he will not step out. They drew the line for him. That this is how far he can go. I came tonight to declare to someone, you are crossing the line. Every line of limitation. You are crossing the lines. 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 Shout amen with power. She may agree. One day, three years later, I think whether it was his son or his donkey, left town. She may don't forget. She may want cross line. If I ain't cross line, my king call and say, hey, you cross line. When I tell you, say, make you no cross. I came tonight to let somebody know. Every invisible line from your father's house, from your village, invisible lines in Nigeria, put inside us by the system. Calibro this Sayyid Arusha. You cross the line. You cross the line. You cross the line. You cross the line. Invisible lines stop progress. You will make progress. Invisible line stops helpers from coming to you. From today, your helper will connect with you. Invisible line. Stop you from realizing your dream. Rano tiele burazi. Ranti kuska ishtalerebo. I declare tonight, whether you know the lines or you don't know, I go into the realm of the spirits. And because of the glory on your life, I declare you will cross the line. You will cross the line. Invisible line limits your speed. But from today, you are going forward. You are going faster. You are breaking through. You are entering levels. You are going places. Shout amen three times. Invisible lines. A man once had an aquarium which he put fishes inside. 
and the fishes were swimming till he bought another fish that eats fishes. He bought a piranha. Piranha enter aquarium like this, chop every fish. Sure. And you see, some of those fish, they're expensive. My next door neighbor in London, he keeps this fish they call koi. Koi. And each fish is 2,000 pounds. God forbid. 3,000 pounds for one fish. If the fish die, what thing I will do? I have to hold a burial ceremony. Because if you fry that one, they will ask you, what do you they chop? Koi. How much is the fish? 3,000 pounds. Ah! Even my mama for resurrect. Come fight me. How you they chop this kind of fish? The piranha was eating up every fish. The man decided he put a glass in between, in, in the middle of his aquarium. Piranha on one side, other fishes on the other side. Every time piranha was going for the fishes, he banged his head on the glass because he can't see anything. I have glasses in my house here in Nigeria. Sometimes your own household, you they bang your head. The fish kept banging his head until it now realized, hey, don't go for those fishes. The owner of the aquarium removed the glass in the middle after about two, three months. The fishes began to swim around the piranha. As piranha won't go, he said, hmm. He moved back because even though the glass had been removed, it is still in the mind of the piranha. Tonight, those invisible lines from childhood to now that you didn't even realize are there. Even the gospel have not helped you to overcome it. From today, you overcome. You overcome. You overcome. You overcome. Shout amen with power. And from tonight, good lines will be drawn in your life. Psalm 16 verse 5 says, The lines are drawn unto me in pleasant... Ha! The glory will draw the line in your life. It will include favor, include blessing, include testimony, include divine turnaround, include breakthrough. Shout amen with glory. Invisible lines. They are in your mind and you don't know. When I was a little boy, you go out, you go, go play football, play football. Still go fall for your eye. You run, go meet your mama. Tell her, yeah, there's something in my eye. You know, African mothers, you draw the air. Oh, come blow your eye. You woo. Like hurricane. She go, can't tell you, say the stick don't come out. But you are feeling it in your head. You say, no, it's still there. I can feel it. Then she will show you the stick. The moment she shows you what was registered in your memory is cancelled. It's not there anymore. It was your, your brain that have not written a new information. Tonight, the gospel, the light of God, writes a new message in your life. Every dark night, dark lines, I cancel them in the name of Jesus. In the book of Zechariah chapter 2, from verse 1, the Bible says, a young man went and was measuring Jerusalem. An angel sent a message to him and said, Oi, what are you doing? I said, I'm measuring Jerusalem. I'm using my theodolites to measure Jerusalem. And the angel of the Lord told him, you're wasting your time. This city is bigger than your measurement. He didn't listen to He still measured they still built a small Jerusalem. I've been there seven times. The old Jerusalem is a small town. Today's Jerusalem, what is outside, is bigger than that small place. I came all the way from London to let somebody know. Your mom did not see your destiny. Your dad did not see your destiny. Your teachers did not see your destiny. For the Bible says, I had not seen ear had not heard. It hasn't come to the understanding of man what God still has in store. So by the exceeding glory, someone tonight, you will step into the fullness of your destiny. The fullness of your calling. 
the fullness of your purpose the fullness of your calling shout amen with power if I don't reach all five tonight we just stop somewhere you will cross the line touch yourself and say I'm a line crosser I'm a line crosser I'm a line crosser In the 19th century, pirates were raiding New York. They were going to New York, carry people load, run away. And the fathers of New York come go out, oh, go out, oh, go out, oh, beyond the city, come build one wall. Say, no matter how the city grow, you know, go reach here. The wall where they built, and then they call Wall Street today. What they thought was the end is now the middle. Somebody have looked at you. What they thought was your end is your beginning. It's 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 your beginning. Shout yes, yes, yes. I don't know who I'm preaching to tonight. But I declare one more time. You are going beyond imagination. You are entering new season. You will cross the line. You will cross the line. Somebody say I'm a line crosser. I'm a line crosser. Put your hands together. Give God a praise. Oh bless his name. The third enemy of your glory. Is the voices of judgment that have already judged you. They said they know about you and how far you can reach in life. But I came tonight to let you know by the exceeding glory of God, every negative voice, every voice of judgment that have already predetermined where you can reach, God will shock them. God will shock them. God will shock them. He will silence them. Say amen with power. Voices of judgment engineer frustration, but you will overcome. Voices of judgment contradict the will of God, but you will overcome them. Voices of judgment make you vulnerable to affliction. But tonight I declare you will overcome them. First Kings chapter 4 verse 9 and 10. A young man was born. And his mother used her own mouth to be the voice of judgment. And Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called him Jabez bringer of sorrow. Because she said I bought him in sorrow. I'm glad I'm a Yoruba man because Yoruba, they know they carry last. When they come to name so, even if they are poor, they say, Allah. They know they near royalty, they say, Ade. Positive names. But this woman with her own mouth, she spoke judgment to her son. And the boy struggled all of his life. Tonight, I don't know where you are in this hall, but every voice of judgment. That have spoken against your destiny. Heaven silences them. Heaven silences them. Heaven will shut them down. Your victory will shut them down. Your testimony will shut them down. Your blessings will shut them down. Every voice that is crippling. Second Samuel 4.4. The servant of Mephibosheth. She just had a rumor that Saul and Jonathan was dead. The little boy she was carrying, a prince, she began to run and drop the boy, broke his leg. Voice of crippling. There are some people, they look at you, they speak and it cripples your dreams. It cripples your ambition. It cripples your vision. You don't want to open your wings because they told you, don't waste your time. But tonight I came to agree with the destiny you carry. 
and I say your destiny will manifest. Your glory will manifest. Your destiny will manifest. Shout amen with power. When I was a teenager, lived with a woman who woke us five every morning with statements like, you never amount to anything. You are useless. You are so lazy. Lazy? We they sell bread for 16 hours old. We sell bread before we go to school. Come back from school, we sell bread. The desert way there in the middle of my head is not genetic. I'm telling you. It's not. It was from selling bread. You know, some people thought you arrived in a Rolls Royce because I drove here in a Rolls Royce today. They think you arrived in a Rolls Royce. They didn't know that you sold bread. These days are what they see here. Now bread. We sell in the morning before we go to school. We sold in the afternoon when we came back. And yet you tell us you will never amount to anything. Well, I have been to about 75 nations. I pastored the first church they called a mega church in the United Kingdom. I pastored a church on the 24-acre premises in London, debt free And the woman never leave her village. I stand here tonight and I declare every voice of judgment is silence in Jesus' name. Is silence in Jesus' name. You will exceed. You will achieve. You will go forward. You will break through. Shout yes. Let me not end it with negative. Hebrews 12, 24 says for all the voices of judgment from your teacher, from your mother, from your father, from the people who thought you never become anything, who have been judging you. Hebrews 12, 24 says, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, and <laughs> the blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. I don't know who it is, but I want you to know, and I say it by the mantle of God on my life, better days are coming. Better days are coming. Better seasons are coming. Things will turn around. Tell your neighbor, it won't be long. It won't be long. It won't be long. I see glory on your house. I see favor on your house. I see testimony in your house. In the name of Jesus. Every voice of judgment against you shall be silent. Including the one you don't know anything about it all. First Kings chapter 11 verse 12. The one where you don't know anything about it. First Kings 11 12. The Lord said to Solomon. Ah, Solomon. You know do well oh. You know do well. You come back slide. Go to marry marry. For all those gentle places. Only say you can't come back. So I will forgive you. Because of your father David. I will forgive you. And because of that. I wouldn't bring judgment on you. I will bring it on your son. The boy don't know anything. No. Jeroboam. Or I Rehoboam, one of the boys. He don't know anything. Oh. Judgment don't wait for him. So when they were handing the government over to him, that judgment was speaking against him. The voice of judgment. So the kingdom broke in the hand of Jeroboam. Israel became two. Ten down, two up, two called Judah. Ten called Israel. The two, the ten called Israel eventually became mixed with other people. That's how Samaritans were born. Today, Voices of judgment, which you know nothing about, we return it to the sender. 
we return it to the sender. We declare your victory. You will be victorious. You will be victorious. You will be victorious. Shout amen. Somebody is in this service. There's a voice of direction. Genesis 37 verse 15. Joseph became lost in the field. But he found a man who said, you are lost. You don't know where to go. What are you looking for? I'm looking for my brothers. He said, follow me. I'll show you the way. In this season of your life, somebody is listening to me tonight. In this season of your life, the voice of direction will come to you. Heaven will lead you. Heaven will guide you. Heaven will lead you. Heaven will guide you. Help us who will hold your hand are coming into your life. Because of the brevity of time, there's no time to call anyone to minister to. So you better say your amen with power. Because something is already happening. The fourth enemy of glory. I'm going to jump one tonight because of time. The fourth enemy of glory is Goliath and his four brothers. Goliath and his four brothers. Many people don't realize that killing Goliath is not yet over. His four brothers are waiting. And the Bible makes us understand they are almost worse. So there's somebody who have vowed to be the Goliath to stop you from entering your glory. Zinibro du Kasalaridabos. Heaven will frustrate their hands. Sambalat and Tobias were angry at the glory coming to Israel. Everyone angry at the coming glory in trem in your house. Heaven will silence them. Heaven will silence them. Heaven will silence them. Balaam, Balaam was hired by Balak. All those prophets where they become personal prophets of a rich man. Balak hired him, put him in five-star hotel. Gave him a nice ride to come and curse the people of God. And as he came, he opened his mouth to curse, blessing flowed. Every Goliath who think they are to stand against the destiny you carry. Shame will be their portion. I said shame will be their portion. The Bible talks of this kind of people. They want to stop you. So Goliath had four brothers. Second Samuel 21 from verse 15. And Goliath's brothers only show up to try to stop your glory. From verse 15. Verse 15 says at a time when Israel was going to battle, David joined them and David was tired. And David was tired. The enemy always waits for when he thinks he can get you. When he thinks you are faint. When he thinks you are tired. But tonight, we're bringing down the four giants. Verse 16. One of them, the Bible makes us understand. He carried a massive weapon. And he's a killer. This is a stopper of destiny. Today, I declare to your life, anything that wants to stop your glory, resisting your passage into the new season, we remove it from your journey. We remove it from your journey. You are going into a new season. Anita Pakete Marie Kusi Pratolari. This year's convention will bring you into another level. Another level of glory. Another level of favor. If you believe it, say I receive it. In Numbers 21, Numbers 21, verse 22, 23, a king was appealed to by Israel. They said, oh God, please, we want to just pass through your land. We will not even touch your field. We will not eat your vineyard. In fact, we will not drink your water. We have our own water. 
We'll just go on your street, your highway. Let us just pass your border. Verse 22, the Bible says, and Sion will not allow them. Ah! You had them carrying glory and you are resisting me. Every resistor of your glory, every resistor of your glory will suffer shame. They will suffer shame. They will suffer shame. The Bible says, and Sion will not let them pass through his border. But Sion gathered his own people together and now came to attack Israel. <laughs> some of you have been going through some things in recent time and you thought it's just a Nigerian problem. You didn't know that you are at a point of critical mass. You are about to step out of yesterday into a new season and something wants to hold you. You have come to the right conference. You will step into destiny. You will step into a new season. You will step into glory. Shout yes. Goliath had four brothers. That's the first one. The second brother is in the verse. Verse 18. Now it happened. After word that there was again a battle with the Philistines at God. Then Sibakai the Hushai killed Saf, who was one of the sons of the giant. I removed the H in his name, and his name became Sap. Sap is anything that wants to drain you. Nigeria can drain you. There are challenges in the land, though. Sap is anything that brings stagnation. Sap is anything that wants to keep you on the spot. If you are here today, and you are tired of being tired, Tired of being drained. Stagnation. Being on the spot. Not moving forward. This giant will suffer shame in your life. Sap is the absence of progress. You will make progress. Sap is that. It's life without productivity. This year you will be productive. Sap is life without meaningful achievement. Meaningful. You are 50 years old. You they take photo. You they take photo. And you don't get anything. Fridge. Television. Where even the television said you have to bang it to work. You they take photo. Not be photo be this old. This one now breaking this giant. Every giant that wants to keep you on the same spot. Today you overcome. You overcome. You overcome. You overcome. I declare to someone tonight, your yesterday will not be better than today. And tomorrow will be greater than today. If you believe it, say I receive it. The third brother of Goliath, his name is Elhanan. I don't want to begin to read those verses again. Yeah, his name is Elhanan. It's in the next verse. This guy is the giant of impossibility. Rika telibro duzi. Marita andush kahida bradozi. Ramo sekai. The things they said are not possible. They are possible with our God. In Anloga, in Ghana, on Monday, a lady who has a, an eye condition that make her to see everything in black and white. She can't see this red. It will look black. Suddenly her eye changed. She began to see color. So tonight, the one who did it then is here tonight. Open your hands. And by the outstretching of your hand, you are releasing something that looks impossible. And I declare to your life tonight, you will come back with a testimony. You will come with a testimony. You will come with a testimony. Shout amen three times. I was walking into my office after preaching in London. We have 12 buildings 
was walking to my office. When one of the members ran to me and said, Pastor, there used to be a doctor here. Every day in the prayer you are doing in the morning, you keep referring to somebody who has heart problem. I just like to let you know, the person you are referring to is on a dying machine in Birmingham and they've told her she can't survive. She's a doctor herself and they're about to switch the machine off. They said she can't, it's, it's over. I held her hand and in one or two minutes I saw the girl practicing medicine. I just dropped her hand and I said, she will live. <laughs> her friend looked at me like, for real? The doctor said it's over. I said, God said it's not over. They called her family in South Africa. They came. They told them, get ready to carry her corpse home. They removed all the ICU equipment mm -hmm. because her heart had stopped. The moment they removed it, her heart began to walk. They carried her in an air ambulance from UK to South Africa, stopping three times. They got to South Africa. Two weeks later, her friend calls, just like Sherry Sherry. Let me just call her number. Maybe her mom would pick. She calls, hello? And it was Dr. Sandile on the other side. She said, hello, Sandile? Yes, it is me. Her friend threw the phone away. What was impossible for me? Sandile is totally healed. She's about to go back to medicine. Somebody's here tonight. They told you it's impossible. You are coming to give a testimony. You will give a testimony. You will give a testimony. Shout amen with power. The giants of impossibility. They cause your promises to be hijacked. Today I release your promises. They try to abort your prophecies. Today I declare the prophetic destiny you carry. Nani motoka zali bronoteli kezuri ranoske yari bratolani. The prophetic destiny you carry will become a reality. You become a reality. You become a reality. I like to announce the giants are falling. The giants are falling. By the time this conference is over, there will be no glory in your life. Things you did not pray for will begin to fall in place. Favor will be looking for you. Blessings will be looking for you. Now tell me three times. The fourth giant, the fourth brother of Goliath, 2 Samuel 21, verse 20 to 22. This guy is a bad boy. This last giant is a bad boy. And there was yet a battle in Gath where was a man of great stature that he had six fingers on every, uh, on every hand and six toes on every feet, 24 in number. And also he was born to the giant. This one, no one play with. 24, he came to fight. This is the giant of abnormality. A problem that does not make sense. Reno Sikia, Reno Tokaparis, Renushka Hidili Rodozi, Rautairabos. The assignment of this giant is to defy Israel. To say, what can you do? What can your God do? I stand here today. I agree with you. Every abnormal situation will turn around. It 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 will turn around. From tonight, there is a turnaround coming. There's a turnaround coming. There's a turnaround coming. 
there's a turnaround coming there's a turnaround coming you will carry the glory you will carry the glory you will carry the glory shout amen three times Stand on your feet. Tonight I declare to your life. Arise and shine. For your light is come. And the glory of the Lord. Is risen upon you. Gross darkness covers the earth. But it will not reach your house. Isaiah was writing. So people who just came back from captivity they were slaves but they just came back so he's writing them one of them is named one of his two sons is Mahashalal Hashbaz which means run to your victory his second son Shia Jashu the remnant will come back tonight please say amen to a couple of things wherever you are tonight I prophesy to your life that by this exceeding glory, you will break new grounds. You will break the yokes of limitation. You will cross every line. Embargoes will be lifted. The siege will be broken. Projects you started will be completed. You will enjoy good health. There are demonic abnormals. But there are God abnormals. I have a God abnormal. Since I was born. 70 years ago. I was born 70 years ago. Since I was born 70 years ago. I have never slept in a hospital. Never never. So I take of that grace for uncommon health. I place on your life. Oh, your amen is weak. Say better amen. By reason of glory, you will go from lack to abundance. From obscurity to limelight. From barrenness to fruitfulness. From poverty to prosperity. From failure to success. I see a new door opening for somebody today. I see a new door opening. I see a new season in your life. I see a new door opening. You will break the barriers. You will cross the lines. Somebody say I'm a barrier breaker. I'm a line crosser. I'm a barrier breaker. I'm a line crosser. What nobody in the house you came out from, what they have never done before, you will do a hundred times. You will do a hundred times. The teacher wrote you down, not likely to succeed, but you carry glory. You will excel. You will excel. If you've been blessed tonight, give God the biggest praise. Give him glory. 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 Oh. I'm a barrier breaker I'm a line crosser Barrier breaker Line crosser Somebody's here You've been in Lagos 20 years Still renting before the next convention you are coming with your keys you are coming with your keys 
You are coming with your keys. I'm a body a breaker. Line crosser. Where they said you will never reach. They will welcome you there. Where they said you will never enter. They will welcome you there. Give God a glory. Give God a glory. Give him glory. Oh. Exceeding glory. The glory that exceeds. Please. Hold on to this exceeding glory. Stop complaining about Nigeria. Your root is not in Nigeria. You are not Nigerian first. You are not Yoruba first. You are not Igbo first. You are not Hausa first. You are kingdom first. And this is Kingdom Life Conference. Your kingdom. Sit down, sit down, sit down. We're about to give our offering tonight. I want the ushers to wait. Nobody moving. The same challenge in Nigeria, financial hardship, is global. The United Kingdom has the worst inflation on record. All those who are into Bitcoin, the thing have crashed. I was just in Ghana. They were complaining that their currency had fallen from 1 to 1 to 15 to 1. I said, on our own better. Our own no get number. But listen. I can give you more than 20 times in the Bible. When it is in the season of difficulty. That the people of God prosper. Isaac. No rain. God said plants. He got hundredfold. Widow of Zarephath. People don't get food chop. God sent her a prophet. The Bible said there was food in her house. For her household. Household means the whole village. Everybody can relate to her. Widow they feed men. Because God was behind the widow. Elisha stands up. There's famine in the land. People were eating the, the poo poo of pigeon. Elisha says, Tomorrow, food go nyafu nyafu. They look at one economic advisor to the executive president of Israel said, As a graduate of Somakum Lage Harvard, it is not possible, even if they Open the windows of heaven. And the man of God. Because Elijah was both a Nabi. And a Hosheth. Nabi speak for Hosheth C. He saw it. So he spoke it. He said you will see it. You will not taste it. Tonight I stand on this altar. The nation is at a crossroad. The world is at a crossroad. But this is the season for you to shine. This is the season for you to enter a dimension of breakthrough. Like you have never entered before. Somebody is about to handle the kind of prosperity they've never handled. I just told you, when things are difficult, it gives God the platform to do the impossible. 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 They're in the wilderness. They say, how are we going to eat? Moses cried to God. The bakery of heaven. Boom! Sent food. What did they call it? Did you know that's not the name? Ma means what is this? Ma now. What is this? Mana is not the name of the food. It's a Hebrew expression of Kilele you. What is this? Oh, somebody's here. God is going to give you a what is this breakthrough. 
It does not make sense. It does not agree with your economic level. God is going to give you a what is this breakthrough. If you are the one, shout amen with power. Before I ask everyone to sow seed tonight, I want to challenge some people who are in this service to sow unusual seed. Because it is the unusual seed you sow that gives you unusual harvest. Once the seed leaves your hand, your harvest is determined. I could give you illustrations and illustrations and illustrations of people who have experienced the harvest. But tonight I don't want to do so because of time. I want to challenge you to sow. I'm going to call for three seeds. I want you to, sh to stretch yourself. I'd like you to say stretch. Or say it one more time, stretch. You know many of us, we like to just sit, fold our leg and think things will happen. Nehemiah had to leave the job of a prime minister to build Israel. So get ready to stretch. Three seed. I'm going to challenge people to sow tonight. And I want everyone who's here, starting with the leaders, down to everyone who's here, businessmen, to say, I hear you, man of God. I'm going to do it. In the middle here, I want some people to come out sowing a $1,000 seat. A $1,000 seat. I want them to come to the middle here. To your left there, I want some people to come out sowing 500,000 naira. To your left there, 500,000. According to your faith, according to how you caught the revelation, don't wait for anyone. A thousand dollars in the middle here. Five hundred thousand naira to the extreme left. Get up, come wherever you are, whatever branch, whatever you, wherever you are, and you are hearing me. In fact, and those of you who are online, Trem UK, Trem USA, wherever you are, Trem South Africa, wherever you are, you are hearing my voice. In the middle here, a thousand dollars. To the extreme left here, 500,000 naira. I don't want you to wait for anyone. Just get out of your seat and come. I'm going to pray with you tonight. Something is about to happen. Exceeding glory. You don't know how excited I am about this team. Ish. Ish. Get out of your seat. Wherever you are, get out of your seat and start coming. And start coming. I know you said, ah, I didn't bring it here tonight. I'm, that's okay. You're going to bring it. Get out, come. You said, I'm going to bring it. Get out, come. A thousand dollars there, 500,000 naira here. Get out of your seat. I'm going to be praying with you. And God's going to give you an uncommon testimony. Wherever you are, hearing the sound of my voice, don't do what comes easy. Do what stretches your faith. I was preaching in Victorious Army in the days of the late Joseph Agboli. I asked people to sow this thousand dollar seed. A young man was outside waiting for a friend inside the church. The young man outside is homeless and he was angry that I was calling for a thousand dollar seed. He said, man, never choke. This one they call for a thousand dollar seed. While he was there, he the Holy Ghost told him, get inside right now. The guy literally ran in. Joined them. Two weeks later, I came to redeem it. A year later, I came for Thanksgiving as a property developer in Lekki. Somebody's story is about to turn around. Those who are sowing the 500,000 naira, I want you to get out of your seat. Five is the number of grace. So you are talking multiplied grace. Get out of your seat and come here. I'm waiting for you tonight. And then I'm going to pray. And everyone is going to sow. The last of the three I want to call. Are going to be here. Each according to their faith. It's a 50,000 naira seed. For this one I want you to run. Get out of your seat. It's a 50,000 naira seed. That's your faith. That's your capacity. That's your desire. That's what stretches you. That's the vision you saw. That's okay. Get out of your seat and come here.
Just get out of your seat and come quickly. You said, man, man of God, yes, that's my faith. Multiplied. Multiplied grace. Come, 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 come. Run out of wherever you are and come here. I'm waiting for you quickly. Step out. It's a new day. It's a new season. A seed can change your story. A seed schedules an other season. Get out of your seats tonight. Oh, glory. Somebody's going to testify. Oh, someone is going to testify. Ah, someone is going to testify. When I finished preaching in Ghana on Tuesday, I was eating in the restaurant in London, in Accra. I finished the village, came to Accra. I was eating in Labadi. A lady walks up to me and she said, when you came to Greater Works, we always do tag team in Greater Works, Ghana. Daddy, Okonkwo, myself, Tudor, and Mensah. You would think these four guys, they are about to tear Accra down. The crowd is crazy. I mean, it is something else. When we, the small ones, finish and hand over to Daddy Okonkwo, then he will come guard that the whole thing can't tear the place up. A young lady now saw me and said, when you came, you pointed at me and said, God is going to give you consulting business. I'm right now consulting for the government and for, I think, United, for United Nations or something. She said, I need your number. I need to be able to sow a seed. My life, I can't tell you the proportion of change. Tonight upon this altar, somebody's story is about to change. Those who are sowing this seed of 50,000, I want you to come close this way. Come this way. It's a seed of grace. Grace will be in your house. I said grace will be in your house. Wherever you are seated tonight, they're saying, Pastor Matthew, I didn't bring it. I want you to bring it even if it is not tonight. You knew you would bring it before the convention is over. I want you to get out of your seat quickly. Or some of you, you already have your phone. You can make a transfer. I want you to do so. I'm about to pray for everyone. And then we're going to tell everyone to sow seed tonight. Whenever you hear a word, you must react to the word. I think tomorrow morning you should take time off work. Because tomorrow I'm going to show you from the Bible. How to go from broke to billionaire. How to go from broke to billionaire. They're not going to pay you billion for work tomorrow. Tell them, say you know come. In Togo Lome, I have four hours layover. So a church quickly fixed for me to speak. The guys took two hours from work. Packed the place. <laughs> the Holy Ghost fell. Power fell in the hall. I finished. Airport was four minutes. Jumped into my plane and it just changed shirts. Broke to billionaire. I'll show you in the scripture. From broke to billionaire. It's in the scripture. Everyone who's at the altar tonight, I want you to raise your hands and ask for eight things from God. And as you're asking for these eight things, let me mention some. Uncommon favor. Uncommon breakthrough. Uncommon healing. Uncommon prosperity. Uncommon progress. These five must be among your eight. Uncommon favor. Uncommon breakthrough. Uncommon prosperity. Uncommon healing. They must be part of your eight. We're going to pray with you. And God will change your story. If you are still seated and you are saying, Pastor Matthew, don't put a timeline on this seat. I am in this house or I'm in a branch. I will write convention on the seat. Even if I drop it in my mother church or if I get the number to transfer to, I will send it. Don't put timeline. I want to collect the blessing. Come out. You said, don't put timeline. Don't tell me today, tomorrow. I will bring it. Get out of your seat and come. Get out of your seat and come.
You're going to learn how to react. Learn how to react to the anointing. And something's going to happen in your life. I'm about to pray. I see your faithfulness. I see your faithfulness. I see your faithfulness. And I'm going to pray now. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. While we're doing this, I'd like to just bless Her Excellency, the wife of the Executive Governor of Lagos State with this Power of Positive Prayer Bible, the only prayer Bible ever produced with 15,000 prayer points in it. Cambridge University Press worked with me to produce it. So let me just bless. I'll give her this hardback and then we'll send the leather back later to the State House. God bless you, man. God bless. God bless you. All right. Everyone at the altar, wherever you are, you have asked for eight things, I'm going to pray with you. Please! You didn't come out for a pledge. You came out with a seed and a commitment. Oh, I love this. You are still coming. You said if there's no timeline, this is your church, you will do it. This is what's going to change your story. Yes, come out wherever you are. Come out. Some of you, you might even be a student. And you have to stretch to do it. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Wherever you are, come out. You will have a testimony. You will have a testimony. Come out. Come out. I'm about to pray. There's a, there's a level of obedience in this house. Come out. And if you are in the 50, and you know you belong in the $1,000 or the 500000 you need to switch. Because anything that does not stretch you is not yet a sacrifice. It has to stretch you. I'm about to pray. I'm about to pray. Remember again tomorrow morning? Broke to billionaire. From broke to billionaire. Everyone at the altar, please lift your hand one more time. Father! You sent me from very far. To come and minister to these people. Let today be the poorest they will ever be. Put favor in their lives. Put increase in their lives. Put prosperity in their lives. Put abundance in their lives. Put blessings in their lives. Let there be a shift in their life. Let there be a turnaround in their life. Open the door of blessings. The door of testimony. The door of a turnaround. That aspiration, that dream, that thing the enemy said is impossible. I declare today, before the next convention, it will be your testimony. It will be your testimony. You'll be blessed going out. You'll be blessed coming in. You'll be blessed going out. You'll be blessed coming in. You'll be blessed going out. You'll be blessed coming in. You'll be blessed going out. You'll be blessed coming in. So shall it be. God will exceed your faith. In Jesus name. Somebody shout a good amen. amen. Everyone at this altar was able to do a transfer. Quickly do the transfer. The account details are on the screen. Please quickly collect that. And send. Those of you who have the seed. Maybe the full seed. And you want to put it in my hand. It's a limited time. So everyone in the house, everyone who's in the house, somebody shout amen. amen. If you were blessed to not shout a bigger amen, amen, you need to take out your seed. Take out your seed. This is a good ground. So I brought my own seed. I brought my own seed. Take out your seed. Take out your seed. Everyone, take it out. Those of you who have the full seed, out of those who came out, you want to put it in my hand. Everybody take out your seed. I'm about to pray over it. Blessing favor on you. In Jesus name. Alright. Grace on your household. In the name of Jesus. Everyone who have the full seed here. Blessing on you from today. Favor. Jesus name. Everyone who has the full seed here. You put it in my hand. Everyone in the house. Take out your seed. Take out your seed. Be blessed sir. Beyond measure. Jesus name. Everyone in the house, blessings on you. Jesus' name. Everyone take out your seed. Blessings. 
grace upon grace, a new season, in Jesus' name. Be blessed, be favored, be lifted, in Jesus' name. Everyone take out your seed now, lift it up, lift up your seed, lift up your seed, lift up your seed, wherever you came from, uh, blessing and favor on you, on common testimony. New season, new doors opening. God changing your story in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Blessing beyond measure in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Everywhere you came from, Trang, Bogon, Oshun State, wherever, that one is on the way to my village. <laughs> Praise God. Blessing and favor on you in Jesus' name. Everybody lift your offering. Please stand on your feet with it. Thank you for honoring the Lord. Stand on your feet with your offering. Thank you for honoring the Lord. Say with me, this is my offering. It goes out of my hand as a seed. It comes back as favor, open doors, new season, royalties, finding money, money finding me, estates, inheritances. They are all my portion. I will never be broke again. Never, never, never. Lift it up one more time. Several books and tapes of Pastor Matthew out there. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask your blessing on the seed we sow. Prosper your people beyond imagination. Silence the voice of need in their life. Silence the voice of darkness. Let your day be the poorest they will ever be. In Jesus' name. Let us give with excitement. Let's give praise in the Lord. Let's give magnifying the Lord. It's a new season. It's a new day. The suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. God is talking about the manifest presence of God. Everyone say it, manifest presence. If there was anything that will help us in these last days with the activities of the devil on the increase is the exceeding glory of God.